Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is St. Nicholas Day. If any of you don't know what this holiday is, or what it's about, you're in luck. Because you're about to find out. Tonight, I'm wearing a Pop Tropica Storyteller outfit, and I have a book to go with it. For the first time on my channel, I'm going to read a story to you guys. It's called The Christmas on an Angel. It's been in my family since 1944. That's right, 1944. It's over 75 years old as of today. It's a very old book. It's been passed down from my family for generations. My great-grandmother first had this book, so I wouldn't be surprised if none of you have even heard of this story before. Here's how the story begins. The Christmas on an Angel by Ruth Sawyer Illustrated by Kate Serity. This is the beginning of our holiday ride, shouted Miklos, climbing into the sleigh between his father and Anna. This is the day of St. Nicholas Eve, the day that begins the Christmas time. Anna said it softly, as if it had been her secret. She was older than Miklos. She remembered the other Christmas time better than he could, and she could tell wonderful stories about them. The children and their father were bundled warm in their bundas, the wool side inside, the hoods drawn over their heads, the fat fur robe over them, and the hot stones at their feet. Istvan and Janos, the sorrels, went fast, spinning the sleigh among the miles between the farm and the village. The snow came down in lazy flakes, covering the far wide plain. What will we buy in the shop that has Christmas tree things? asked Miklos. What will we buy in the baker's shop? asked Anna. We will buy what we can find, a little of this and that. Remember that already we have had three years of war, their father, Matthias Rado, spoke soberly. They found the village street that held the shops almost empty. The shop windows looked empty, forgotten. There were a few colored papers to buy, a little gold paint. That was all. The baker's widow held nothing but a few loaves of rye bread. No white loaves, no buns, no cakes. Anna and Miklos pressed their noses against the glass and looked in vain. They could not believe what they saw. No Christmas cakes this year. Anna said it with a great sigh. Papa, what will we put on our tree this year? What will the world do without Christmas cakes? We will do what we can without them, said her father. But I don't like it, said Anna stubbornly. Such a disappointment. There must be some way to think Christmas cakes back into Christmas. You can try, my Anna, but it takes white flour and honey, nuts and fruits to make good cakes, and nobody has any of these things anymore. Don't bother, Anna. When St. Nicholas comes, maybe he can do better than the baker, Miklos said, getting into his sleigh. All the way home, he was shouting, Faster, Istvan! Faster, Janos! We must beat St. Nicholas! Will you never eat your supper? Mari Rado, the children's mother, was calling them back to the table for the third time. Anna and Miklos had been jumping up, running to their windows, breathing on the frost to make peepholes through which to watch the road, the road on which St. Nicholas would be coming. First we will hear his bells, said Anna. I can hear them now, cried Miklos. Look, Anna, this year it is one white horse which pulls his sleigh. But what a horse! Anna drew in her breath in a great ecstasy. It is white as the snow, shining as the stars, a horse to bring a warrior. The children always felt brave while they were looking through the windows. But when St. Nicholas sprang out of his sleigh, 
when his hand lifted the latch and he stepped inside the door. Then they scampered like frightened mice into corners. The Christmas saint was big and towering. His bishop's hat with the golden cross reached about almost to the rafters. His bundle was the most beautiful the children had ever seen, with colored pictures of angels and stars, of shepherds and mangers. He pointed to Anna. You, Anna, have you been a good girl? Anna's voice squeaked like a mouse. I haven't been too good. I have washed the dishes and said my prayers, but I did take a frog to school and put it in Minka Zerzer's desk to scare her. Not too good, but then not too bad, St. Nicholas looked at Anna's mother, then back at Anna. One present is deserved. What shall it be? Anna answered quickly, One Christmas cake shaped like a little clock, please, St. Nicholas. I have already told you, Matthias Rado began. They were all looking at Anna. They were expecting her to change her Christmas wish. That seemed too much to ask of anyone. Very reluctantly, Anna said at last, Well then, a little muff, white, with a hot potato in it to keep my hands warm. Again, St. Nicholas looked at Anna's mother. Both nodded, as if that was a good wish. The saint turned to Miklos in his corner. His arms shot out and caught him by the ear. Not roughly, but as if it was a convenient handle by which to hold a small boy. You, Miklos, have you been good? Not altogether, but rather. I have helped my father. He will tell you so. I have helped my mother. She will tell you so. But there were the plums in Maran Laszlo's orchard, bigger and sweeter than ours. And many times I have been a dunce in school. The Christmas saint laughed. For a moment he looked like Maran Laszlo himself, big and towering. Not altogether good, but rather not altogether bad. Well, what shall your gift be? Miklos shot the answer straight. Nuts, candy, a big knife, a pair of boots, and something for Firko. He is a good puppy. This time St. Nicholas looked at the Matthias Ruddle. Both bowed sullenly. A long stride to the door, a quick slamming, and the Christmas saint had gone as he had come, on a single breath. The children ran to their peepholes. They watched the great white horse, fit for a warrior, bear St. Nicholas on and on, until both had disappeared. They knew he would stop at every farm, ask every child what... And that's the, the story of St. Nicholas and Day. throughout the year. On and on, he would ride Interesting through the story, cold, isn't starry it? night. I don't know if St. Nicholas Day is still celebrated around the world or not, but I know things are different right here where we live in, or at least those of us who are living in the USA. Instead of Santa Claus knocking on our door and giving us a scare, we get to knock on Santa's well, door and say hi to him in a store or a mall. If you want to hear another Christmas story, leave a comment down below. This way, we I don't have to be ready for Santa Claus. He can below. be ready for if you us. Like the Pop Tropica costumes I'm wearing. Happy St. Nicholas Day and to all a good night.